Okay. So before we look at our next section, we're going to do a little quick review on lesson six. So here we have a polygon, and we have to name the polygon by the number of its sides. Tough, right? It looks kind of familiar, especially if you're uh, learning to drive. What is it? Octagon. Octagon, just like that stop sign. We have eight sides. What can you tell me about those sides? They're congruent. They're congruent. How about the angles? The angles themselves are just congruent. But you could say that they're also obtuse, yes? Is this a regular or irregular polygon? Regular. Okay. Uh, regular. So we know it's regular. Um, we know that it is an octagon. And is this, yes, it is convex, okay? If I extend all those line segments, I'm not going to find any of those line segments um, extending into the interior. Okay, name this polygon. What is this polygon? Pentagon. Pentagon, because it has five sides. Is this irregular or regular? Irregular. Why is it irregular? Yeah, irregular. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the sides are not congruent. Sides are not congruent. You'll find that these two here and here are a different size from the other three, so it's irregular. Okay, concave or convex? Convex. Convex. Once again, everything is going to be extended into the exterior. Okay. Can you find the perimeter of this? Here in 35, we're here in 40. What would I need to do? Five times eight. Five times eight? Because I have eight sides. Or I could go five plus five plus five plus five plus five. Do that eight times, right? Okay. Either which way, you should end up with 40. Oh. Ah, you kind of forgot one. Okay. Find the perimeter of this polygon. Again, I can do some addition. I can do some multiplication of some different sides. I have two times nine inches, three times eight inches. So Add the two together. This seems like so much easier than all the stuff that we were doing previously, right? Yeah. It feels more natural to us, okay? Okay, which is regular, which is irregular? Kind of talked us through that already. A was regular. B is irregular. So it's choice B. Okay. Now this one, if we know a particular perimeter, this is kind of working backwards again. And I know I've already shown you the answer. But work your way back. Perimeter is 90 meters. I know that my perimeter, it says it's a regular hexagon, so all the sides are going to be the same length. Okay, so I have to go 90 and divide that by 6. What do I get? Each side is going to be 15 meters. Do we follow? Mostly? Not at all? We're good. Okay. So we were looking at two-dimensional figures the last couple days, and then they quickly transition us into looking at three-dimensional figures. Okay, and with these three-dimensional figures, beyond finding, you know, the perimeters and areas that we had before, we're going to be finding surface area and volume. So. There's all this new stuff that we're going to be learning about, or reminding you about. Do have one more? Yes. Okay. Polyhedron. That's going to be a solid, three-dimensional, 
multiple faces, right? Face. Do I know what a face is? We know what this. It's the side of a, any side of the shape. Okay, so a side of a solid? Yeah. Like if I were to describe the edge of a table, how would you describe that? If I talked about the edge of a shelf, how would you describe that? Where it ends. Okay, where we, we're gonna have the ending where different faces meet. Okay. Faces are gonna be meeting. Lots of vertex. Vertex is always going to be a middle, possibly. That's always going to be a point. Can a vertex be more than a point? Could a vertex be a line? I don't think so. Vertex is always an intersection where everything is meeting together. We're going to always have a point for a vertex. Okay. Um, they tell us about some of the solids that we're going to be learning about, like prism, pyramid, cylinder, cone, sphere, you know, platonic solid. What do we know about a base? Now, a base is talking about a specific thing that's part of one of these solids. So this is a solid here. This is a solid here that we're talking about these 3D solids. Solid, solid, solid. Here as well. This is already in its name. What's a base? Now Nathan's already told us a face is a side of a solid. Edge is where those faces are meeting. What's the base? The inside of it. It's not really the inside. It's going to be, you can think about it as like the bottom, maybe. Like whenever I think base, I think bottom. I think it's not going to be completely correct. I think that there's going to be more involved. But base, I think bottom. Okay, surface area. Rather than just having a flat, oh, I, I multiply length times width, because it's 3D, that area changes a little bit in order for us to find the whole thing. And volume, that's where I'm going to be finding things where it is something cute. Area, remember we had something that was square because we have to have more than one dimension. So surface areas are always square, volumes are always cubed. That's what you're going to see for the units. You just need to stand up a little further back here because you have, you have a hard time staying awake every day. So, here's some of that important stuff. You can find this in your textbook as well. Okay, this is some of the key information. Some of this may be new to you, some of it may not. So, a polyhedron, okay, the, the top two are examples of polyhedrons. The bottom three are not. Okay, prisms and pyramids are polyhedrons. Cylinders, cones, and spheres are not polyhedrons. What do you notice that is the same about polyhedrons and differs if it's not polyhedrons? I know, everyone's busy writing oh. rather than thinking. Yeah. I'll give you a couple minutes just to write it down.
Mm-hmm. Because it's a meet at a vertex stage. Like at a it, for, it, it needs to meet at a vertex for polyhedrons? Because I think Melanie, um, the base. You think that the bases are different? Well, there's base, 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 base. I think there's something specific about these that's different than those. Is it because? Um, yeah. Is it because? Wait, Sarah, I'm just trying to worry. Because um, all the shapes on the bottom. Have a round side and it's circumference. Ah. Everything that's not a polyhedron has some aspect of it that's round. Do these have an aspect that are round? No. What were you thinking, Trina? Oh, I don't know. You forgot? <laughs> that happens to me a lot too. Okay, so all of these have, you know, a face or some aspect of this that has a, a circle, it has something round. Our polyhedrons all have flat faces, flat faces. Okay, there's never anything round about a polyhedron. So a prism has two parallel face, I have two parallel faces, but those faces have a specific name called a base. Okay, they have to be parallel and they have to be congruent. Congruent means they have to have the same angles, the same line segments, it's gonna be the same measures for everything. So two parallel congruent faces, the top and the bottom is known as a base. Because I could just flip that over, right? And it would become a new base. And these bases are connected by parallelogram faces. The pyramid says it has a polygonal base and three or more. So the minimum is three, but I could have more than that. And all of those faces the triangular faces on a pyramid meet at a vertex. A vertex is where we have that particular point where it all meets together. Cylinders, cones, spheres, not polyhedrons. Okay, they are solids, but here I have congruent parallel circular bases and then they get connected by a curved surface that's just not even a side, it just goes round and round. Same thing with this cone, we have a circular base and then their surface is once again going around but everything meets at a common vertex. The sphere, I don't even have a base. There's no faces, no edges, no vertices, all we have is that round ball. And we provide everything. Okay. Good. No, one the wrong way. Where are we at? The last one. So all points on the surface of that sphere are the same distance, the same radius away from the center. And because of that, there's no faces, no edges, no vertices. I don't see anything circular. Okay. So, because of that, can I name the bases? 
What are the bases? C, D, V? No. Well, wait. Is that the entire face? No. Now, what do we remember about naming things? What do we have to do? We have to go around consecutively whenever we're naming these particular shapes. Okay, a two-dimensional figure. I would probably try to start with the A and say A, B, B, C. If I start it with C? You start at any point, right? C, A, B, D. Okay, so we have a base, A, B, C, D, where's my other base? So it looks like I have more than one base, right? Yeah. My other base is D, F, H, G. So I have those two bases. What else can I name? Can I name the faces? Um, G, C, D, H. G, C, D, H. F, H, D, B. F, H, D, B. A, E, G, C. Or I can't really. A, E, G, C. Yeah. So we've named this one, this one, this one. Now we need E, A. F. I went the other way. Same thing though, E, F, B, A. Yeah. As long as we're going in an order. Okay, edges. G, H. G, H. We have this for a while, right? Because how many do we have to name? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We should have a total of twelve edges. Would you agree? That's basically all these connecting lines. We're going to be at that for a while. How about vertices? I only see eight edges. You only see eight? One, two, three, four. Five, oh, six, mind. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I, I was missing like FB and like HD. Now, I was just trying to mark these. Don't take this as the, these are congruent. These weren't meant to be congruent marks. This is just saying, hey, I'm counting that particular side. Let's say we have 12. But so you, you missed some of them on the inside? No, I missed like the ones like H, D, G, C. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes that happens. Best to be careful. So we can continue with that. Can you tell me some vertices? How many vertices do we have? Where do we have those meeting points? Is there vertices? Isn't A technically a meeting point? Well, let's take a look. Base, that's all we got. Bases, we didn't name them all. According to this, they said, hey, this is also a face. A base is also a face. Oh. Okay, base is also a face. That's something that we're going to need to remember. Base is also a face. Edges, we knew that there were 12, so they named all of these different segments. And we knew that that continued. And our vertices, our meeting points, were all those corners. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. How about 
this one. Can we do the same thing? Yeah, this is a polyhedron. So we have like, a polyhedron. Yeah, yeah, it is. How many sides does this one have? How many different faces that are not faces? What, what is the shape of our base? It looks like this is our base right here. And the shape looks like a very long gem. Yeah, it does. But do, does that look like a shape that you know? Yeah, it looks like an emerald. I, I was thinking hexagon. <laughs> but I, I understand where your, your thinking goes too, okay? So we have hexagon bases. Our bases here are, let's start, K-P-O-N-M-L. So whenever I'm naming this base, I need to have all six vertices. The other side, the other base, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay, now these two are also faces, so I include them here as well. Okay, so for the bases, Mm -hmm. Wouldn't I be included in the first base and then M included in the second? Because M is technically a side of G, H, J. No. The way that this is labeled, I see this as M and this uh, as I. I thought M was the like backwards, um, you know, it was like the very far most um, well remember that what we have here is all of those letters are naming a vertex okay. right which is naming where the different line segments meet together and so that's how i interpreted that this was this point here because it was closer and there was no other letter named for that particular point so that's why I said, hey, I think that is M. And then doing the same thing here. We're naming these points. I need one close by to name that particular one. Just like this one is J because that's close by. Okay. So what faces do we have? We have K, E, F, L, L, F, G, M. M, G, H, N. Are we following? Any other questions on that one? Well, we don't have 12 edges on this time. How many edges do we have? Ooh. It seems that way. What you're going to have to do is go carefully around. One, two, three, four, five, six, because it's a hexagon. That also means there's going to be six on this side. So there will be eight. And then no, no. one, two, three, four, five, six. You're exactly right, Nathan. There's 18. 18 different edges. And those edges get named like K E L F. I have to name the two points that are the endpoints for each of those segments. Okay, vertices. How many vertices are there? Well, they're all vertices. Well, well, can you explain what, what you mean by they? You said they are all vertices. And all the letters are vertices. All the letters that we see are a vertice. Each of these points is a vertex. So I have E, F, G, H, I, because we have a total of 12 of the vertices. Good so far? Mm. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. It says, the solid formed by polygonal faces Uh, 
Um, so it is a polyhedron. The base is a hexagon, and the solid is a hexagonal prism. So we have, they said K L M N O P. That goes against the way that I was thinking. It makes sense for this other one, E F G H I J. Makes me want to go back. How did they get? Oh, uh, it's not the other way. Yeah, that's that's actually what happened. You're right. K L M N O P. Okay, we're good with that then. I thought I was doing something wrong for a second, because you know what happens. Just saying. Okay. Bases. Okay, we found that we had those rectangles and the bases were also faces. But then we have all these edges. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus another nine. We have the 18 that we were talking about, and each of those points are a vertex. Okay, how about this one? Is this a polyhedron? No. We have something circular. So this is not a polyhedron. What kind of solid is it? A cone. A cone. This was pretty easy because, yeah, we all tend to think of funnels and ice cream cones, probably ice cream before the funnel. Okay. So, we have, do we have any faces? Yeah. Well, we have a base. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We do have a base. Do we have a, a vertex? We have a vertex. Hmm. So this is a vertex. This here is the base. This circle right here. And T is also a vertex. No, it's not. How is T a vertex? Oh no, that's the radius. Never mind. I, I agree that T is a point, but not all points are, are a vertex. I could have a point right here for some reason. They, they could label a point up there and it wouldn't be a vertex. That's a good thing to actually know. Like, you know, all vertexes are going to be points. Not all points are necessarily vertexes or vertices. Okay? Solid has a curved surface. It's not a polyhedron, it's a cone. The base is a circle and there is one vertex. We labeled all that. So we have a base, which is the circle, and they named it by that point in the center. We had the vertex, which was labeled W, but it doesn't have any faces. Wait, I thought bases were faces though. Only if they are a side like that. Oh, okay. I agree. Like I, th that this is what we're trying to work out is what fits, what doesn't fit. Okay. In the case of a polyhedron, yes, bases are faces. In the case of something that's not a polyhedron, the base is not a face. Does that make sense? Hopefully we'll get some more with practice. Okay, identify this solid. What does it look like? Would it help if we identified a base? Maybe. What kind of shape do you see for the different surfaces? It looks to me that I see a series of triangles. I see a triangle, 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 triangle. 
So that definitely seems like if it's a bunch of triangles, it has to be a triangular finger. Okay, how about this one? Is this a polyhedron? Yes. No. I have a curved surface. Not going to happen. Cylinder. Okay, because I don't have things meeting at a particular vertex. How about this one? Does everyone agree with Trina? Or do you have a different opinion? So I've heard triangular prism, I've heard rectangular pyramid, Anyone voted for the triangular pyramid? I, I think it's a triangular prism. Anything? There's another vote. Any more votes? Anyone think it's a cone? Phew, no. okay. I don't think it could be a pyramid. Yeah, because it would have to have another side to it. You would have to have like, it would have to make a mirror reflection, right? Mm. Like, you would have to flip over and like actually, see that's kind of like a half tense. It would have to be a full tense. But what does it need to ha be a, uh, sorry, the um, pyramid? What did you write down for your definition of pyramid? Polyhedron with two parallel converged faces. With two? Two or more? Uh, I think we're missing something on that. Pyramid, a polyhedron that has a polygonal base and three or more triangular faces that meet at a common vertex. Oh, there's no vertex. Pyramid. I saw oh. I thought at any rate. Okay, so this, in order to have this, I'm going to see triangular pieces meeting at a vertex. I have triangular pieces, but they're not meeting at a vertex. Like this would have to, this wouldn't exist and it would meet each other in order for it to be the pyramid. Does that make sense? That's why the, this is a rectangular prism. Okay. These here are known as platonic solids. Okay. Tetrahedron, a hexahedron, otherwise known as a cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron. What do you notice about these? They don't have sides. Yeah, okay, there. These have nothing that have that round surface. So these are polyhedrons, all of them. What else do you notice about each side? Each face? Hmm? Do they look like they're all the same size? Like, if I look at one, two, three, I guess maybe not necessarily on the bottom, but I, I, I'm typically seeing equilateral you know, regular, equilateral. I'm seeing things that are quite often congruent in the size of those line segments. Okay? And once again, you'll get all these. This is not something that I'm expecting you to memorize. You can find these in your textbook. You know, all of these are literally on the pages. You know, the stuff that we're asking you to write down for these key concepts. This stuff is on page 69, okay? Some of the first stuff was from page 67. But you can find these, and I'll be giving you a copy of all of this, okay? Prism. Okay, T is our total surface area. 
marking this perimeter. And we'll start again with this on Monday to finish it up. We're nearly done.